Hi there, welcome to the channel. My name is Brick and I'm your official Puerto Rico travel guide. From the common to the uncommon, I help people discover Puerto Rico's most amazing natural, historic, and cultural attractions. And today, I'll give you a complete guide of the breathtaking island of Vieques. The archipelago of Puerto Rico is composed of many beautiful, unique caves and islets. But one of the most special islands that forms part of this archipelago is the island of Vieques. Located just seven miles to the east of the main island of Puerto Rico, Vieques is a great option for those who wish to have the quintessential secluded Caribbean island experience. It is home to world-renowned beaches, some of the friendliest people you will meet and the brightest bioluminescent bay in the world. And in this travel guide, I'll give you everything you need to know to plan your visit to this breathtaking island. And at the end, I'll share with you a detailed cost breakdown of a visit to Vieques. There are two main options of getting to Vieques. The quickest yet most expensive way is by booking a plane ticket or a plane charter from San Juan International Airport, the Isla Grande Airport, or the Ceiba Airport. The slowest, most budget-friendly, and common way of getting to Vieques is by taking a 30-minute ferry ride from the Ceiba Ferry Terminal. The terminal is about an hour and 15 minutes drive from San Juan, and is located inside the grounds of the former Roosevelt Roads Naval Station. To book your tickets to a ferry, you'll need to visit the website PuertoRicoFerry.com where you'll see the options of Ceiba to Vieques. Here, you'll choose the dates and time you wish to depart, whether your trip is one way or round trip, and what date and time you wish to return. In this step, make sure to pick the times that are specifically for passengers or passengers in cargo. One thing to note is that the cargo ferries can be slower than the passenger only ferries. So if you're in a hurry to get to Vieques and back, choose the passenger only option. After this, you'll see a variety of ticket options based on age and whether you're a Puerto Rican resident or not. After choosing the ticket options that apply to you, you'll be able to specify which carry on items you'll be bringing with you to Vieques, like luggage, beach shares, and coolers. If you're planning to bring these items back, make sure to pick the round trip option. Finally, insert your payment method, verify, and pay. There are several situations that you need to be aware of when booking these tickets through the portal. The first is that to have a better experience during this process, you'll need to do it on a desktop computer since parts of the website might not load properly if you try to book the tickets on your phone. Second, ferry tickets are usually made available one or two weeks prior to the month. For example, if you're looking to book tickets for September, you might need to wait till the third or even fourth week of August to book these tickets. So you won't be able to book too far in advance. Third, only about 20% of all tickets available for a specific journey are made available online. So, if you find that a date and time you wish to book is sold out online, you might still have some luck finding tickets at the ferry terminal in Ceiba. And fourth, disabled individuals and residents of Vieques have priority over all other passengers. So, make sure to get to the terminal at least one hour before your departure to make sure you're in the front of the line of the visitors and you get to embark on your journey. If you're arriving at the Seba Ferry Terminal in your own car or a rental, you'll be able to park in one of the designated parking areas located a short walk from the terminal gate. This parking is 24 hours and will charge you $7 per day plus tax. From there, you'll be able to take a quick shuttle bus to the entrance of the terminal. If you were thinking about taking your rental car to Vieques using a cargo ship, it's important to note that rental car companies won't allow you to do this. So you'll need to either rent another car in Vieques or find another form of transportation, such as a golf cart, which are very popular, or using taxis. Once you arrive at the Seba Ferry Terminal, the process is pretty straightforward. 
just show your QR code boarding pass, which you should have received via email, and the staff will point you to the spacious and breezy waiting area. About 20 minutes before your departure, the staff will start ushering passengers inside the ferry. You'll go into the ferry through the bottom floor, which is completely indoors. But you can go up to the second floor, which has an indoor and outdoor area. Or go to the third floor, which is completely outdoors, and where you will be able to see the main island of Puerto Rico fading away as you sail closer and closer to the island of Vieques. Pro tip! If you're like me and get seasick easily, you might want to buy Dramamine, an over-the-counter drug that is used to treat and prevent motion sickness. When you dock in Vieques, you will have arrived at Isabel Segunda, the most populated barrio located on the north side of the island municipality. This area resembles the city centers that you'll find in every municipality of Puerto Rico with its center plaza and walkable streets surrounding it full of restaurants, bars, historical structures, and some accommodations. Another popular area in Vieques is called Esperanza and is located on the south side of the island. Esperanza is characterized by its main street and walkway called El Malecón that runs right next to the ocean and is lined by many restaurants that cater mostly to visitors of the island. Our first stop during our visit to Vieques was Rincón del Café, a cozy outdoor breakfast spot near Isabel Segunda to grab a quick bite to eat before starting our adventure. After our delicious breakfast, we drove to the famous Ceiba Tree Park, located on the west side of the island. The Ceiba Tree, also known as the Tree of Life, is characterized by its colossal size, its mystical aura, and its strong cultural significance to the indigenous people of Puerto Rico and other pre-Columbian Mesoamerican cultures. Although this specific ceiba is an imposing 50 feet high and about 300 years old, its presence and surroundings exude peacefulness and entices visitors to take a seat on one of the many benches surrounding it to meditate and connect to nature setting the stage to what will be an amazing adventure. After taking in the captivating sight of the ceiba tree, we decided to head over to the Mosquito Pier or Rompeolas. This mile-long pier was under construction during the early 1940s and was originally planned to stretch from Vieques to the municipality of Ceiba, where it would connect to the Roosevelt Road Naval Station. Today, this pier serves as a great place for anyone to enjoy running, snorkeling, fishing, and sightseeing. During our visit, we were able to drive all the way to the very end of the pier, where we parked our car and walked the remaining strip of pier that has a spectacular view of the main island of Puerto Rico and Vieques. Next, we got back into our car and drove all the way down to the south side of the island to Sun Bay Beach. Although this beach is conveniently located close to the community of Esperanza and is popular among locals and visitors, its approximately two mile long length has enough space for visitors to spread out, making it feel secluded even on busy days, especially if you drive all the way down to the left side of the beach on the sandy trail. Sun Bay Beach is a perfect place for those who wish to lounge and enjoy the calm Caribbean Sea. But as all Puerto Ricans know, the beach has a tendency to make you feel tired and hungry. So we hopped back into our car and drove to Esperanza, where we stopped by one of the local food trucks at El Malecón to eat some delicious traditional Puerto Rican foods, such as pinchos, tostones, and empanadillas. If you're interested to learn more about traditional Puerto Rican foods, you need to check out my video on the top five foods you must eat when visiting Puerto Rico by clicking the link in the description below or by clicking the card above. As the sun started to set, we headed back to our Airbnb to get ready for what would be a very special event in Vieques called El Encendido Navideño. Encendidos Navideños are traditional events where the holiday lights that decorate a municipality center plazas are turned on for the first time, officially marking the beginning of the holiday celebrations. 
In my opinion, Encendidos Navideños are the perfect examples of everything that encompasses the Puerto Rican culture. At these events, you will see all sorts of traditional food, music, and dances. But the Encendido Navideño at Vieques is particularly unique from all the others in the main island of Puerto Rico because its culture is influenced by the nearby US and British Virgin Islands. And thus, here you will hear music, see dances, and traditional clothing that reflect the culture of the neighboring Virgin Islands. Now, before going into detail of our second day at Vieques, please take a moment to smash the like button if you're enjoying this video and found it helpful. Also, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos that'll help you explore the common and uncommon parts of Puerto Rico. Finally, if you're interested in learning about a specific attraction, leave a comment below so I know what travel guide to make next. Now, going back to your visit to Vieques. To start off our second day at La Isla Nena, we headed over to Isabel II for some absolutely delicious breakfast at Rising Roost. This beautiful location features breezy indoor and outdoor seating areas and a friendly staff that will help you decide on what to choose from their mouth-watering breakfast options, such as their absolutely delicious French toasts, eggs, Puerto Rican coffee, and sauteed potatoes. With a full stomach, we headed over to the Vieques Wildlife Refugee to visit the first beach of the day, La Chiva Beach. The route to La Chiva is pretty straightforward. Just follow the large invisible signs on the side of the road that point you to the different areas and beaches inside the Vieques Wildlife Refugee. Here, you'll drive down both paved and gravel road, as well as inevitably drive past a group of wild horses that roam all around Vieques, until eventually you'll see trails to your right that lead you to the beach. Once you're at La Chiva, you might want to walk to either your left or your right to find the perfect spot for lounging and relaxing. Although La Chiva is one of Vieques' most popular beaches, during our visit, there were barely any people making it feel like a secluded private island with crystal clear and calm waters. The next beach we visited was the nearby, smaller yet charming Caracas Beach. Although there were many more people at Caracas, we felt that it had a friendly vibe and was perfect for enjoying the calm waters of the Caribbean and socializing under the gazebos while enjoying food cooked in the barbecues that are part of the facilities. And last but not least on our list of beaches to visit on this day was Playa Negra. Located just west of Esperanza, Playa Negra is a breathtaking hidden beach that stands out from all the others because of its beautiful charcoal black sand. To get to Playa Negra, you'll need to park your car right next to the road and walk down an easy eight minute long hiking trail that starts next to a large Playa Negra concrete sign. If by any reason you don't see much black sand once you get out of the trail, try moving to the right side of the beach where you will see much more of this unique natural phenomenon. If you're like me, you'll want to exfoliate your skin with this volcanic black sand, or maybe bring a magnet to experiment with its magnetic properties. Playa Negra is truly a sight to see and a work of natural art because of its contrasting shades of black sand, turquoise water, and honey-colored cliffs surrounding the coastline. Although every single spot we visited on this day was absolutely breathtaking and awe-inspiring, nothing would compare to what is arguably the standout attraction of Vieques, the bioluminescent bay. 
There are about five bioluminescent bays around the world that we know of, and a whopping three of those bays are located in Puerto Rico. But the bioluminescent Mosquito Bay in Vieques is by far considered to be the brightest bio bay in all of the world. Located within the Vieques Wildlife Refuge, its protected surroundings have allowed the dinoflagellates that produce the bioluminescence to thrive under almost perfect conditions. If you want to experience the bio bay, you'll need to book one of the many kayak tours available, most of which start off at Esperanza. From there, you'll get on a bus that will take you to the Mosquito Bay, or you'll hop on a kayak and follow your guide into the water, where every paddle stroke that you take will light up the water brighter and brighter the further in the bay you go. Unfortunately, the gear we used to film was not light sensitive enough to capture this beautiful natural phenomenon. But we can assure you that when you are there, you will feel as if glistening bright stars are not only decorating the night sky, but also surrounding and lighting up the bottom of your kayak. Before heading out for breakfast on our last day at Vieques, we decided to explore El Muelle de la Caña in Esperanza, an old sugarcane pier that dates back to when the sugarcane industry thrived on the island. This is a great place to jump into the water, go snorkeling, and look around at El Cayo Real and El Cayo de Tierra, a cay that is accessible by walking a thin strip of sand and that features a hyper saline lagoon, bird washing, and hiking trails. We then headed to Isabel Segunda once again to eat a hearty breakfast at the Panaderia La Viequense that serves scrumptious traditional sandwiches that are perfect to giving you energy for a long day of adventure visiting some of the island's most important historical landmarks. A short two minute drive from the Panaderia La Viequense Located on the top of a hill overlooking Vieques, the main island of Puerto Rico, and the sister island of Culebra is the beautiful 14 Conde de Mirasol. Although unfinished, this was one of the last forts built by the Spanish in the Americas, which was under construction from 1845 through 1855. In present times, this colonial style building houses an art gallery archaeological artifacts, but most importantly, it houses a large collection of photographs, artifacts, and documents from the most impactful and dark period of Vieques' history, the occupation by the United States Navy. For over 60 years, the Navy used Vieques as a live munitions testing site by constantly bombarding land it had expropriated on the east and the west side of the island forcing Viquenses to flee to the center and killing much of the agricultural industry that prospered on the island. Heavily toxic bombs would constantly rain on Vieques more than 80 times a day, causing irreversible damage to the natural landscape, to the economy, and to the culture of Vieques. Although protests had arisen before, the final straw for many Viquenses came in 1999 when David Sanes, a civilian Viequense, was killed by a bomb that supposedly misfired. From this moment, protest gained momentum and many important figures from Puerto Rico, around the world, and most importantly, the people of Vieques came together to raise their voice against the atrocities occurring on the island. As a result from this pressure, the Navy finally withdrew from Vieques in 2003. Although there are efforts to restore and clean up the island from toxic matter and looming bombs that are still active to this day, Vieques still suffers from lasting effects such as a higher cancer rate than the main island of Puerto Rico, a devastated agricultural economy, and now the threat of gentrification by wealthy foreigners moving to Puerto Rico and Vieques looking for tax incentives. To visit Vieques as a tourist and spend most of your time enjoying the beaches without learning about its tumultuous history would be completely irresponsible and disrespectful to the people of Vieques that still live and work on the island despite the mountains of challenges 
that they face every single day. For this reason, I suggest you try to visit El Fortín Conde de Mirasol to try to learn about Vieques' history and treat every single Viequense you meet with respect and kindness. And now, after visiting the Fortin, we headed over to the south side of Vieques to visit the otherworldly archaeological site of El Hombre de Puerto Ferro. Here, you will witness many large boulders that look seemingly out of place from the rest of the landscape and where archaeologists unearthed skeletal remains and artifacts that carbon date back to 500 through 2300 BC, presumably to the pre-Arawak Stone Age culture in the Antilles. Visiting this site can feel both eerie and peaceful as you get a sense of mysticism and mystery emanating from the colossal boulders and their surroundings. And although it was almost time to head back to the main island of Puerto Rico, we couldn't leave Vieques without trying one of their traditional foods, the delicious arepas. Arepas are flat and round flour patties that can be baked, fried, boiled, or steamed, and made with different types of fillings and flavors such as coconut. Another traditional food you might want to try during your visit to Vieques is the bili. The bili is a seasonal rum infusion popular during the summer months made with a tropical fruit called kenepa and other ingredients such as sugar, vanilla, and cinnamon. As the clock neared 6 p.m., it was time for us to head back to Isabel II for the last time and board the ferry back to the main island of Puerto Rico. Although we did not want to leave this beautiful and unique island municipality, we took with us many beautiful memories and stories that will stay with us forever. We sat in the open deck and as the sun set, looked out at the fading silhouette of La Isla Nena with an overwhelming feeling that this was not going to be our last time visiting this wonderful place and hoping that more people have a chance to learn about its history, see its beautiful landscape and meet its wonderful people. And now, I want to reward everyone who's watched until this moment in the video with the cost breakdown of our visit to Vieques so that you can plan your trip accordingly. Our two main expenses were accommodations and transportation. For accommodations, we booked an Airbnb at a guest house in Esperanza, which set us back $266 from Friday till Sunday. As for transportation, we opted to rent a Kia Soul from Maritza Car Rentals, which conveniently picks you up and drops you off at the ferry terminal when you arrive and depart. This specific car cost us around $214 from Friday to Sunday, and filling up the gas tank on our last day cost us around $15. Our other big expense was the BioBay Tour, which would have cost us $60 but since we paid in cash, it cost us $50 for two people. And when it comes to food, it really depends on what type of places you're planning to eat at. During our visit, we tried to balance it between casual food joints, food spots that cater to visitors, and one restaurant. In total, we spent around $200 on food and dining during the whole trip. And finally, we spent around $23 for parking at Ceiba and $8 each for our round trip tickets to Vieques and the two bags that we each carried. This brings our total to our three day trip to Vieques to around $784 for two people. Although this is a huge sum of money for visitors who are already spending a lot of money to visit Puerto Rico, Remember, you can also plan a day trip to Vieques that will be a lot less expensive, yet still be extremely rewarding. And that's it. Thank you guys for sticking around till the end of the video. I hope you found it helpful. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you like this video, 
there's a good chance you might also like these two videos on my channel. So make sure to check them out. Thank you guys so much for watching and see ya in the next one.